OCN Word of God to the World Welcome to Creations by In Him. I am your host, Dr. Dolores Jones. And as I always say, we're always in for a wonderful treat because of the Word of God. We're going to go ahead and get started and dig into what God's Word says. We're talking about what is faith. F-A-I-T-H. What is faith? Well, I'm glad you asked. I have an answer for you. However, I want to read this before I get started with the message of faith. Uh, looking in 2 Peter chapter number 1 and starting off with verse number 2, which tells us grace, unmerited favor. Woo! And like Pastor Price says, this grace is just multifaceted. Oh, my, my, my. And peace. Our God is the God of all peace and comfort. Be multiplied. Woo, multiplied. So that means it just, it just flourishes. Multiplied to you in the knowledge. You see, it's important that we receive knowledge because knowledge is information. Information is power. And that goes along with knowledge is the ability, yes, the information or knowledge is the ability to use knowledge wisely once we obtain it. And so knowledge of our uh, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of uh, Jesus our Lord. As his divine power, his divine power, just not power, but it's divine whoa, has given to us all, that little conjunctive word, all things that pertain to life and godliness. That means he's fully equipped us. That's important to know. He didn't just give us a little part here and there, but he's fully equipped each one of us as we take the time to get into the word of God and find out what his word is speaking to us concerning. It says, godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which has been given to us exceedingly, wow, exceedingly great and precious promises. Oh, I like that. You know, it, it, it's awesome to take the time and, and, and just go over all the words in the Word of God. Did you understand or do you understand that the Word of God is like a woman fully at her time to bring forth that child? This Word is like that. It's always bursting forth with new revelation or inside information, I'll say. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which he has given to us exceedingly great, just not anything, but exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Boy, if you don't know it today, in the physical, in the world system, oh, it's not a good thing. 
but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add, A-D-D, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, uh, kindness, love, because our God is the God of love. His love just keeps on reaching, and I like it. And you might get a laugh out of this. That's why, see, we, we never should give up on family, our friends, our loved ones when it comes to prayer. Because his love, the love of God keeps on reaching. And this, his love can reach and just, ooh, remove all, all that hell right up on out of him. Mm. To godliness, brother, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if, prerequisite, these things are yours and abound, you will never, you will never be barren nor unfruitful. He said never be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, that's why it's so important. That's why the word tells us over in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed. Rightly, not wrongly, but rightly dividing the word of truth. This is his word. He's given it to us, family. So he said, for if these things are yours and abound, you will neither or never be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. And that's why we have to keep the word, ever keep this word before us, because we can get off of focus. We can become off balance. So that's why you have to continue to hear the word. You have to continue to uh, uh, gather with others uh, that has that same precious like faith like you. Now, let's look at number 10. It says, therefore, what's it there for? It says, therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never, woo, never stumble. See, if you do all these things, the word tells us you'll never, never stumble. Let's look at 11. For so an interest will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Number 12, it says, for this reason, hmm, I would not neglect to remind you. Now, I'm reminding, I'm sharing with you, but I hear the word also. So I'm reminding my own self. It says, for this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. Though you know and are established in the present truth. So, for this reason, I'm reminding you. And when I remind you, I'm reminding my own self. And that's why we have to stay focused to the word of God. Now, uh, we're talking about faith today. Yes, it's, a, it's an old subject, but it's a subject that never <laughs> runs out. <laughs> and I would like to add that Faith, this is what we have to live by, family. Once an individual receives and confesses Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, this is where the word tells us over in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Now that's a deep statement. For we walk by faith. In other words, we live by faith. 
according to what the word says and not by sight. This is why the message of faith is so vitally important to be taught. Because when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to taking uh, or believing or, or, or professing and confessing what God's word says, knowing that he's a God of his word, that he will do all that his word says he will do, all that we will believe and confess in line with his word, then he said, I will. What? I will confirm my word with the signs following. That's the kind of God we have. So, faith, what is it? Glad you asked. Let's continue to look to the word. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Yep, we're brewing pretty good right about now. <laughs> Hebrews number 11, and we'll start off with verse number 1. It says, now faith is the substance. So we understand that faith is substance of the things hoped for, the blessed things we hope for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So, also, it's important to understand that, in other words, when it comes to walking by faith according to the word of God, one must turn off sense knowledge evidence. Well, what are you, t what are you saying, Dr. Jones? You have to turn off, in other words, what one can see in the physical, hear, touch, taste. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, we have to turn off the sense knowledge evidence. In other words, the five senses that in the physical, this is what we go by. When it comes to faith, it's according to what I believe, what I confess in, the li in line with the word of God. Always remember that confession brings possession. No say e, no get e. So I'd like to make the word simple, which it is very simple. God's word is so simple, a child could understand it. Hallelujah. And that's why I'm so glad that he made it that simple so I could understand it. And as I continue to get into the word and also yourself, you'll find out. It's a good thing. And, and, and to learn how to walk by faith, not by how I feel, not by how the situations and circumstances of life look like in the physical. Because when you get to looking in the physical and you get your eyes off of the word of God, everything looks oh so big. It's like, oh God, what am I going to do now? That's why you have to know what the word says in spite of what it looks like in spite of what you feel like in the name of Jesus. This is how we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, how, do I, uh, one, how does one obtain this faith? I'm glad you asked. Let's go over now to the book of Romans. Hallelujah. How does one obtain the, the faith? All right, Romans number 10. And let's look at verse number 17. It says, so then faith comes by hearing, 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 hearing. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, not the word of the physical circumstances, but what the word of God says. I'm learning how to take and trust God according to what his word says, in spite of what it looks like in the natural, in spite of what my physical body might be trying to dictate to me. I'm choosing to be the doer of his word and not just the hearer only, although faith does come by hearing, but you must hear what God's word says. And another thing about the faith, it's not a one-day situation. This is a lifestyle. We have to walk by faith and not by sight every single day of our lives. It's not just a turn on and turn off. It's a, like I said, it's a lifestyle, and we have to walk it every single day in order to be or stay victorious. 
because the Father has already made his children victorious. We're, you are not a victim. You need to understand that. You are not a victim. You are a victor because God has made you that way. Oh, I tell you, that's why his precious promises are so awesome. But see, if you never get in the word and you never find out all the good things that he has promised to us, and I mean, he's got some good things in store for us. However, we have to learn and will to want to do things God's way and not ours. That's where uh, the problem can come in. Doesn't have to be, but it's better for me to decrease and let him increase on the inside of me. It's better to do it his way than my way. Like the song that Frank Sinatra used to sing, I did it my way. Yeah, I sure did. And I was a big mess going somewhere to happen. <laughs> oh, but thank God for the word of God. It makes all the difference. That's why I'm always so happy, because of what God's word says. You know, I, like I say, we all deal with different situations and circumstances in our everyday life. This is, this is it. This is what's going on. See, we're in the world as a child of God, but we don't have to be of the world. Well, what are you talking about, Dr. Jones? We don't have to do things the way the world system does it. We can learn how to do it according to what God's word says. And there again, that's what makes all the difference. You know, it's, a, it's an important thing to know that in this day and age, in the physical, I mean, there's so much devastation just going on. You know, it used to be when you heard about a murder, it might have been, you know, a whole month or has passed by or so. I mean, in the natural now, it's gotten to be every day, every day something's happening. Someone is losing their life. That's why you can't afford to take the word of God uh, uh, just, you know, like, oh, well, I, I, I can get that tomorrow. No, you got to hold it dear in your heart. You got to learn what his word says and get it off the pages. Learn to commit the word of God to your remembrance. Well, you say, Dr. Jones, I, it's hard for me to remember things or mem remem my memory. No. You, your memory is blessed. That's what it is. It's, your memory is blessed. And what you can do and to learn a scripture, you get take one word of that scripture, go over it and go over it and go over it, then pick up the next one. Before you realize it, you've learned the whole scripture. And so it is so exciting. This, this way of life in the word of God, walking by faith and not by sight, it's an exciting life. You have to know and come to understand that even the Father, like the word just told us over in, in 2 Peter 1 and 3, he said he's given us all, A-L-L, -L, things that pertain to life and godliness. That means he's not left anything out, family. That's because he loves us so dearly. He is so concerned about every area and every aspect of our lives to the degree that we uh, invite him in and uh, allow him to show us the better way of how to do things. Oh, boy, I tell you, it makes all the difference. Then you can walk in the peace of God. Then you can walk in the joy of the Lord. Oh, my gosh, I tell you, and his peace that he gives us. He gives us a peace that passes all understanding. It is so awesome. See, but he tells us, he tells us how to, to uh, maintain that peace. Let's, let's look over to Philippians, the book of Philippians in chapter number four. He tells us just how to maintain the peace that he's already given us. And we have to understand that God gave it and do not let the enemy try to steal it from you. You are in charge. You have to hold on to the peace that God has given, given to you. Like you can get upset with someone and you'll say, oh, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Don't think so, hon. <laughs> no, you need all of that, okay? 
You ain't got time to give somebody a piece of your mind. No, you have the mind of Christ, but you better hold on to it. <laughs> All right, Philippians 4, and let's look at uh, number 6. It says, be anxious or be careful, in other words, for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Why? And number seven says, and the peace, whoo, glory to God, the peace of God, which surpasses all, A-L-L, -L, understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, his peace. And the thing about it is, family, he gives it to us. It's free. All we have to do is hold on to it, maintain it. Oh, my God, the peace of God. And, I mean, you can have had a, a, a horrible day during the, uh, in a day, Everything just, you know, going wrong, going wrong over here, going wrong over here, going wrong up here, step back, going wrong. Just situation, boom, boom, all day long. But I want you to know, you can lay your head on your pillow at night and be in the peace of God. Oh, my goodness, it's so awesome, his peace. He's the God of all peace and comfort supernaturally, I'm trying to tell you. And I tell you, it's nothing like his peace. But so you have to receive it by faith. Then once you believe it by faith and you hold on to that peace, and you know what helps to, uh, in learning the word of God, get to your mirror and say what, and then get to your Bible out. Read that scripture and say, that's me. The word tells us over in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all, A-L-L, -L, things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Now, I stand in the mirror and I read that. What? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can do all, A-L-L, -L, things through Christ, not in me, through Christ who gives me that strength. And there's nothing like having his supernatural power and strength in our lives. Of course, that is because the gift of the Holy Spirit that he's provided for us, the power of God to have. Oh, my God. That's why it's so, this, this lifestyle is exciting. It's not, it's not a boring life by any means. <laughs> it is so exciting. Look with me now. Let's go over to uh, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah uh, 20, the 26th chapter, this, the, the word, like I said, it, it just gets, it, it's always bursting with new revelation. It's not dull. It's life-giving. It's life-changing, I tell you. So that's why you have to get in here and hold on to it and be that doer and just not the hearer only. Oh, my God. Now, uh, Isaiah 26, let's look at number three. And it says, you will keep him in perfect or complete peace. Oh, man. It says, you will keep him in perfect or complete peace. How? Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Mm. Trust in the Lord forever. Then you say, well, Dr. Jones, I, how do I trust God? You trust what his word says. He said, believe what his word says. Receive what his word says. Then begin to be the doer of what his word says. And as you apply yourself, it'll become more and more and more. Y you'll just be that doer of his word and not just to hear it only. Oh, man, awesome, awesome, I tell you. I, I, I tell you, I love his word. I love the Lord. I, I, I get excited. I, I want to, I continue to share it because I know it has changed my life. And God is not a respecter of persons. He is a respecter of what his word says. That's why he says get into his word, get his word off the pages, commit his word to your remembrance, and then he said, I will. I'll confirm my word with the signs following. 
So we do. We learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, family, that makes all the difference. It makes life so much more simpler that I don't have to be governed by situations and the circumstances. We all are faced with different, like I said, circumstances and situations. Why? Because we're in, we live in the world. We just don't have to have the world living on the inside of us. That's what makes the difference. Learning what his word says. And that way we can stay on top of all situations and circumstances because we have his word and he says he's a God of his word. That's all I need to know, okay? And that he'll confirm his word in our lives. Uh, let's go over to the gospel of John chapter number 16. And it says, these things I have spoken, uh, verse 33, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace, Oh, glory, peace. In the world you will have tribulation. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. But be of good cheer. Why, God? I have overcome the world. So through him we are world overcomers because it's not in us, it's in him. He says over in Acts 17 and 28, it says in him we live and move and have our being. So I, I'm telling you, it's just so wonderful. It's marvelous. It's amazing. And I get so excited because this is, the, this is our lifestyle, family. And we have to, and if you want to be on top of the situation and circumstances and not have everything piled on you, then you get in this word. Find out what's in his word. Know that he's a God of his word. And he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Hallelujah. And you can walk by faith and not by sight. We don't have to be governed. Like I said, yes, we deal with different situations and circumstances, but that's where prayer comes in. That's another thing. You have to learn how to pray. Then what you pray, in other words, you pray the word of God. That's how you can be guaranteed that what you have prayed about is a done deal. Why? Because you've given daddy his word back to him. And he's not a God that he lies. He said, I will confirm my word with the signs following. Oh, family, you better learn how to trust him. Like you say, well, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Dr. Jones, how to trust him. You trace him through what his word says. Yes, I understand. You can't see him like I, I can't see him either. But we see him through what his word says. He will confirm his word in our lives, in our situations, in our circumstances, with the signs following. That's the kind of God we serve. He's an awesome God. He is such an awesome God. Oh, I just, we want to take this time now, and if you'll just pray with me. Dear God, your word says that if I will confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I'll be saved. For with my mouth I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth, there it is, uh, confession. With my heart I believe unto righteousness. With my mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Lord Jesus, you are now my Lord. You are my Savior. I thank you for taking mental distress for my worries and my anxieties I thank you, hallelujah, for taking spiritual torments for all my sin. So we say thank you. Hi, brother. Hi, sister. Now you prayed that prayer. You are now in the family of God. OCN wants to hear from you. So you get into a word teaching church. Know that the victory is yours. Hold on to it. We'll see you for the next time. I love you. This is Dr. Jones. I'm signing off for today.